Dom, it's that show. That's that show. We're going to kick it old school. We got an old school episode back again, ladies and gentlemen, two Detroit nerds. It's another week. It's another podcast. Another day. More content for y'all. Always that. What's good, Don? Everything's good, bro. You already know with me. Yeah, man. You've uh, been, I I think I, I have to now finally congratulate you. I think you have been consistently now the person who's uh recommended the best anime consistently i don't think you've missed one time there hasn't been one dud we uh let's jump right into just let's Let's talk about free let me sit up for this i'm ready we've you know covered it a little bit on this show but it's mainly been from your perspective Mm -hmm. just because you know you watched it before me and you know you were telling me that there would be things about it that i would really like and i was like i wonder what he means by that yeah I took it. I took some time, you know, right before we did this show for the past uh, four hours, okay, and just like burned through a couple episodes of Free Run, and I completely understand why you would think I would like it. Yeah, it's such a it's if if uh, the Dungeons and Dragons genre of anime had mm-hmm. an easy listening mode, yeah, it would be Free Run. Yeah, it's the one of the most pleasing shows to watch in terms of its pace, mm-hmm. and also. I think too, uh, I was mentioning this to Ali, like there's so many things that you get so used to from watching anime that we talk about all the time, like things that might would normally kind of take you out of the story or just be a little bit jarring, like things that might be whatever, super annoying, loud Mm -hmm. character, right? Or a type of humor that just doesn't work. Yeah. Right. Freerun knows what it is so well. Completely. It knows exactly. It's got such a grace of storytelling that I appreciate so mm-hmm. much. And let's not mention it's fucking beautiful to watch and experience. It's got fucking great intro music. Yeah. When was the last time we said that about an, a modern anime? JJK. Oh, yeah. JJK. True. That's it. That's it, though. That's it. <laughs> I mean, like, it, but but it's crazy. Like, I I definitely have been ignoring a lot of newer releases aside from jjk and a couple others Mm -hmm. and it's cool to kind of walk off the beaten path watch something that you know normally like i I wouldn't get that excited for but this was a a fun and also just like smooth and calming show well i I knew it was in for something great when uh i realized any of the episodes i had watched that a couple of my buddies had told me about like didn't seem like it would fit the story but it's like Freerun makes all of what you see fit its story. Yeah. And I love that about it because yeah. I, I agreed with him. I was like, you know, if this would have been anything else, I wouldn't even have sat through this, wouldn't have watched it, wouldn't have been committed to it. I actually just watched the newest episode the other day, too. And, like, I don't think my level of interest has dropped once since watching it. And there could have been a couple, few episodes where there wasn't even any fighting going on. Right. Crazy. Right. But I liked it still. Yeah. It's almost like uh, the sort of questing type of anime but with a slice of life pacing Mm -hmm. if that makes sense it does and i guess for people listening who maybe don't like either of those genres they may not think oh that sounds boring as fuck why would i want to nah it's actually a great way to tell those stories a great way to get immersed in those worlds i think very few animes that try to build those types of worlds very few of them actually stop and let you live in them for Mm -hmm. a second and free run gets to do that in a great way I, i I really think that's the big uh, magic of it. The uh, another thing that I like on my uh, intro to the watch was like it it gives off this kind of image that it's like uh, kind of safe and li- like a fun type of anime, but they show you mm-hmm. throughout the season. You may not have gotten to that point, probably yet, but not. It's, no. it's not oh, only true. that. Like like they paint that picture very well throughout yeah. the whole season, at least from which I've seen, but. There's always these deterrents that you come across in these episodes that it's like, oh, sh-. like, it's oh, as yeah. fun and happy as this looks. Right, yeah. The D- shit is still very dangerous, you know, and, and they just do it so well because the way that it's animated, like you said, it looks like it'd be just like a slice of life, just like, a, oh, it's an adventure anime. We're just going to travel mm-hmm. around the three of us, show how we become this awesome team. Everything's going to be happy go lucky. Nah. No. Nah, it's crazy shit. I, and I haven't really gotten to, I guess, the darker parts mm-hmm. quite yet, but I have seen that ominousness. Oh, yeah. That, again, can only be done if you are actually immersed in the world, if you yeah. actually believe in the bonds that the characters mm-hmm. share, in the fact that all of this time has passed and there's this depth to yeah. everything, right? Like, 
you have to kind of spend time in that world in order to prove that, mm-hmm. right? And because it's it does that when it starts to drop these hints of what the threat or danger yeah. and the level of the level of that, right? Yeah. What that is, yeah, it feels heavy. No, definitely. I mean, even you from know? where I am, without giving a spoiler away, like you know, they, they early on they very clearly state you know how strong Freeran is and how much of a force she is by herself. Like you you know because of all the stories and all the backstories that they show, you know she's like of the highest tier of a mage, if, if you will, within yeah. this world. There's even still times right now where it's like, al- although this takes place after they've already beaten the big bad, you know, they already slayed the Demon King, you know, without knowing who it's going to be or when it's coming, that there are going to be much greater threats out there by the end of this show. Yeah. And that's what I love so much because it, it keeps you wondering. Like anything else, you know, like with Isekai or... Like One Punch Man, for example, you know, it's again very early stated how strong these people are. Mm-hmm. But in a lot of those other shows where, where that happens so so soon, there's no like there's almost like no level of threat anymore. Like right. One Punch Man, like a lot like Slime, like Overlord, like a lot of these shows, you know, like okay, this is the most badass motherfucker in the show, no matter what I see. Like yeah. if there's a fight and it's like. <gasps> Oh man, he died. Yeah, there's you're never like, gonna you're never gonna consider that. You're like, yeah. no, nah, he's gonna get up. Yeah, there's o- there's always like maybe two obstacles, and then they just completely blow away the the enemy. Yeah, no, you I totally know well, what you mean. And, and I think that's another thing that works so well for Freeran because you can see, and and even for at least the first half of the season, like I would never look at anybody funny for that being their mindset. Because that's how that's how they show it to you. They're like, right. oh, you know, all the all these stories told about or everything you see or do, it's like effortless. But they like, like I said, after the midway point, they kind of veer off and they're like, nope, R- real world problems are coming in right now. So let's see them. But yeah, I'm glad you watched it, bro. Yeah, and I'm was, glad you liked it. It was cool. It was a pleasant to watch, mm-hmm. but also interesting show. You know, and and you know, there's there's going to be more to see. And yeah, no, I I um. I was surprised too. I, I don't mean that in a bad way, but no, I was. It, I'm telling you, there's so many of these new shows that people want to tell me are so great, and there's this and there's that, and it just doesn't uh, appeal. It's not appealing in yeah. the way that I felt like Free Room was appealing to me in a way that older anime was kind exactly. of appeal, appealing, appealing. Exactly. And that was what you were saying when we we brought it up mm-hmm. uh, last time. Yeah, no, Which for sure. That's why it works. And man, I, I'm just hoping like. There's a lot of times where something comes out early in the year, and it just does something so well that for the remainder of the year, no matter what else drops, mm-hmm. it's kind of hard to hold a light to. But I think this year is going to be very different, bro. We have so many things dropping, whether it be new or an ongoing series. Like, there's a new show coming out. It's it's being – this is the first sign that you already know it's going to be big. It's advertised all over Country Roll right now. It's called Kaiju Number 8. It's a – the manga came out, I want to say, about two or three years ago. I know it's like it's still fresh as a newer title, but I seen a trailer for it and it looks absolutely great. I think you would probably end up liking it too. I don't even know what the premise is or nothing. I have no okay. idea what it's really about. I just know that there's kaijus and they fight. Okay. There's as, kaijus as as, and, and they and fight. And I'm sure it's way more to it. Okay. And not kaijus and they fight like the sense of like Godzilla. It's not like these big ass, mm-hmm. like seventy foot tall monsters running around just ravaging through the city, but that looks very good. We also have a lot of other uh, second and third seasons dropping too. One I want you to be on the lookout for. What? And I want you to wait till this second season drops before you start. Is Tower of God? Yeah, no. You, uh, everybody's tell, told me to watch that, but you're telling me to wait till the second season. Why? Um, now that I've read it and I'm so far into it. I watched the anime first season before I had ever read anything of it. And I liked the first season a lot. But after I went and read as much as I did and came back and watched it again, I really realized how rushed it was. Like, super, super rushed. Like, like, as compared to the read was, like, you can tell they they had to fit so many things in that first season that it, it feels clustered. Now, again, if you've never read it and you're watching it by that pace, that's all you have to go off as far as source material goes. So I understand where it could be received well in that sense. But I think season two, they're going to do the right thing. Because it's been like, bro, Tower of God came out a minute ago. And I want to say at least like five or six years ago. And they're just now dropping season two. What do you think the holdup was? 
Was um, it COVID delays that like pushed things back and back or? I don't see. I want to say it was that, but I don't remember seeing or reading about anything like that around that time. Hmm. I, I think it's more that that was, if I'm not mistaken, that or got a high school. I don't remember which one. Those were like one of the first two mine was to get anime adaptations. Mm-hmm. So because that was still fresh and a lot of people only knew the title if you were already into Manwa at the time, mm. I, I kind of would say it may not have been like the, the best received at the time. Cause just because a lot of people didn't know about it. Like obviously whoever watched it would go out and say, like, hey, go check this out. It's good. And it was a Crunchyroll exclusive. So that could have helped it a little bit. But I think with season two dropping now and so much of the annual Manwa, the actual Manwa being out right now, I think I think it's gonna come back with season two heavy. Real heavy, especially because of the the pace season two is about to go at and where it is in the story right now. Because we're about to get pff, talk talk about a crazy crazy good MC who should be super OP and will be, and you know he will be, right? But he actually goes through like the struggle while being the prodigy or whatever whatever you want to claim him to be. And that's cool too, you know. Like I think I think when people. Uh, give that complaint of oh they're too op or whatever. It's like if they earn that though, I don't I don't mind it. Exactly, you know what I it mean. Makes sense in that in that way. Yeah, it, it makes sense and it also is satisfying to see oh that type of you know like that type of bad guy would have been you know tore through him Easily. two or three seasons ago, but now that he's lit, like it, no, it feels around for a scrap. Yeah, it feels good to be on that character side and be like yo they're stronger now. Like that's oh lit. yeah. It's, you know, it, yeah. he, he doesn't. They don't get like the. Uh, I call it the Ichigo effect. You're not just the strongest fucking uh, being of three different kinds of beings at the top of the class <laughs> right from birth. Right. And there's no real reason why you're advancing through everything at alarming rates, at, at record breaking rates, and then toward and then at the end of the series, you're like, oh yeah, this is why he did it. My man, my man didn't struggle. Yeah, like he was breaking through everything like it was nothing, bro. I, but I think some sometimes too there is that it can itch. Work. There's that itch people want to scratch where you just want to yeah. see somebody win. Mm-hmm. That's that's cool too. Yeah, man. There's 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 a lot to love. I feel like about a lot of different types of MCs definitely in shonens. And well, I think the same way I said that, uh, Spencer made a very good point to me. He said uh, Ichigo was the only one out of the big three MCs, or mainly of most of any shonen MCs that doesn't fit the same trope like naruto didn't have either of his parents around Mm -hmm. luffy only had one uh goku for the longest time only had one and then with the reintroduction of super you know it introduces mom and all that but the trope for ichigo was he had both parents for so long no i'm sorry he had his dad all the other characters usually just have their mom um and he's also the only mc who doesn't i'm not gonna wait for you to power up I'm not going to let this fight prolong. He'll show up, and he's he's standing on business right away. Right. None of the others really do that. Naruto talks his ass off. Luffy yeah. has a lot of fun, likes to laugh. Goku lets his motherfucking opponents get as strong as they can right in his face. And he's right. like, my man, right. go, go wax him right now. My man's <laughs> threatening to blow up the universe, and you're like, go ahead, get stronger. Like, come Yo, on, dog. for real. That's Goku be respect him. Go, Goku be getting me mad with that, bro. Oh, like, dude, that shit used to piss me off as a kid ooh. so much. The Imagine you're one of the townspeople that th- their fucking whole house blew up because Goku wanted to be cute. And you're talking about... Just <laughs> I, so he could have a scrap. I'd be a part of the anti-Goku league in, in that world. <laughs> hey, that is <laughs> I always see this meme, and it's like uh, uh, Superman... Uh, in your city fighting a villain and your car is parked outside as he's fighting him and he picks your car up. <laughs> it's yeah, like this right. picture of this dude just like, Fuck. like just fucking like in, uh, on a strike against Superman because it just shows him pick up his car and just whip it into the fucking city. <laughs> just like, dude, I gotta go to work tomorrow. Like, fuck. <laughs> I love that shit, bro. It's good. Yo, for real. Uh, how about, real quick, let's switch into live action shit, but Uh-oh. still let's Japanese because we did try to do an no, intro yeah, where did. I wanted to talk about Shogun, but we blew that intro, so we never went back to actually talk about Shogun. So Shogun is my new favorite show. Dom, have you seen it? Still haven't. I, very few times, man, will you ever hear me say, go on Hulu. Like That's crazy. Very few times. I don't think, have I ever even mentioned Hulu? I don't think I've ever even said Hulu on this show. No. Most of the time, I mean, there's definitely stuff that you can find reruns wise uh but as far as the original great goes, for 
Yeah, but originals? Are you fucking kidding me? I, uh, uh, maybe I'm an idiot, and there's some major Hulu show that's incredible and groundbreaking, but if it's not an FX like re-release mm-hmm. through Hulu, it's usually garbage. Yeah, for the most and part. Usually, and I have no problem defending that. Um, and we will clip this so that you know, yes. people can hear me say that. Yeah, they can come back for receipts. <sighs> but this show, so I'm going to talk about another show for a second, okay. and then I'm going to come back to this to I'm demonstrate ready. how this made me feel because you've seen the show I'm about to talk about. Okay. Game of Thrones, you've seen, right? No. No. Nah. You blew my nah. bit. No, Fuck. I didn't blow your bit, bro. I'll let you God go with your bit, it. and then I'll tell you why I haven't watched it. All right, so... All right. The reason why I'll back up even further. The reason why it took me a long time to watch Game of Thrones was one. I've never been a Lord of the Rings guy. I'm not a lore guy. Yeah. I definitely don't really care about the whole dragons and knights and sh- that world. The Shire yeah. does not. It's hard to get uh, into. Tittle. Yeah. Maybe it's because I'm not genetically, uh, you know, connected to that story. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe, I mean, it could be, but the point is, is like, it's just never done anything for me. Yeah. So I assume that Game of Thrones would be something like that just from watching it or just from seeing the imagery. Right. Of course, Game of Thrones is so much better than yeah. any type of corny, you know, thing like that. Not that Lord of the Rings is corny. Sure, Lord of the Rings is a great, you know, tr- trilogy yeah. or however many films. That's why I have four hours to watch a movie, though. Yeah. <laughs> like, who's got time for that? You know? One, one, <laughs> yeah, one. Right? We're not talking about the series, the one. But, uh, but... <laughs> No, nah, I mean, Game of Thrones was fucking great, and Game of Thrones was also great in a way that very few shows and very few prestige shows can pull off, which is that right from the beginning, you are immediately drawn yeah. into the world, and each question that the show is proposing to you and each new mystery that's opening up is bringing you closer you know, into that immersion, yeah. Yes, and you're not you're not confused. There's nothing that is taking you out of it by either seeming unconvincing right. or just uninteresting. For sure. Like everything almost has this mystical quality to it, but it's instantly believable. Good. Um, Shogun had that effect instantly it's, from minute one. It's crazy. That that's your comparison because just yesterday as I'm scrolling, doom scrolling, uh, I seen a caption with somebody's quote, I forgot if it was like like a a news line or like a like a a magazine like a New York Times. I forgot who it was, but Game of Thrones was the actual comparison. And within the caption, it it was basically saying whoever was giving the quote, um, Shogun has already beat all the allegations of which they were putting up against it being Game of Thrones like. Yeah, and, and has done everything right that they may not have early on, which yes. is crazy to say. Yes, this is one season's out only, right? Yo, that's nuts. You don't even need the whole season, though. This is what I'm trying to say. From the first episode, you see the world just open mm-hmm. up in such a like it really is a masterclass in prestige storytelling, setting up a world that is um, is immense and, and large, and your character is feels infinitesimal, just like this tiny speck in this huge world that could just swallow them whole. Yeah. And that helplessness in the beginning of being the character who is shipwrecked in Japan and is uh, supposed to be a English like a uh, merchant mm-hmm. on a Dutch vessel that is, you know, against the Portuguese and the Portuguese have already gotten to Japan and they've Christianized some portions of Japan. Okay. Uh, but the Portuguese and the English and Dutch are at war at the time. Right. So they can't tell the Japanese that they're English initially, of course, because they think that they're the they're likely to give them over to the Portuguese yeah. who would then kill them, right? So they you see immediately so much about the show or about the world of the show in the very beginning tells itself just by the interplays mm-hmm. of the like, you know, historical circumstances yeah. of each character. Like just by them having to exist with each other and deal with each other, you learn so much yeah. that the story building or the exposition is like literally scene by scene. And that's a very hard thing to do. It doesn't draw out anything. And you're just thrown right into, bam, you're shipwrecked. Here's what's going on, you know? And it's crazy that it's fucking Hulu amazing. did that. Fucking, and yeah, dude. Who, who, who did you guys hire everybody, over there at Hulu, bro? Everybody gets their shot. I really do believe that 
these, you know, platforms may not necessarily be the, you know, greatest output producers in terms of consistency, but you'll get people that get hired to do something cool. And this is one of those times Shogun really shows you like there's people with stories to tell in cool ways. Yeah. Now you finished the season. Uh, There's only one more episode left in the season. It's still coming out. Yeah. Oh, oh, I thought it all just, okay. No, no, no. So yeah. So there's uh, nine episodes of the 10 out right now. We got the series finale coming out next week. So definitely going to have a follow up because by the time we record this again next week, I'll have seen. I want to start watching it though. Yeah. And now's the time to binge it, bro, because you'll be able to then actually watch the last episode right when it comes out. Yeah, Yeah, bro. But I'm telling you, bro, the first three episodes, like make sure you don't have anybody expecting to try to be able to reach you or anything because you're going to be glued to the fucking TV. Just put a do not. Yeah. Do not. For real, bro, because that shit is better than most movies i've seen i'm serious bro this is big time shit this is big time like storytelling tv movie home box office shit well this coming from you is crazy to me because i don't i don't hear this uh this take on many things yeah i'm I'm never surprised anymore and normally stuff is mid oh shit did we lose our connection on the no, it looks like it's still on the recording, riverside. Right? It looks like it's still recording. Let's Why, let's it keep say? it going. It's look look. It says it's oh, trying to reconnect. Oh my goodness! Make sure you have a stable internet connection. Okay, I think we're good. We're good. I think right, we're bat, good. Bat, bat, bat. Okay, uh, so that brings me to the other thing that I was going to say about something that's mid mm-hmm. because I I really believe in positivity this year. Year this is the year of the nerd. This yeah. is twenty twenty four. You know, we're just trying to be good and happy and not just hate on shit all the time. Let them know for sure, though. This is the year of the Detroit nerd. Oh, yeah, exactly. There's, there's no other, by the way, there's no other p- nerd podcast. If you see a podcast and they're using nerd as their branding, they're copying us. They're mm-hmm. going to be served. That. They're going to be served with a cease and desist. Don't pay them no mind. Don't just route all of their followers to us. Let them know where, where the nerds live right here. Yes. We are keep getting this trying to reconnect stable connection thing, and it's really killing me. It, it's um, almost worrying me. Every here time. we go. Here we go. Here we go. Uh, so getting back to the mids. Yeah. I'm, I'm excited to hear this. I went to go see a movie that I was really excited to see for a uh, long time. Uh-uh. This was a movie that I had talked to you about. I had talked up. It was from a studio that I really feel like has made a lot of good movies mm-hmm. over the last 10 years okay a lot of which are some of my favorite you know modern movies yeah for sure uh that movie was civil war and that studio was a24 and the the big thing that i want to say that i feel like needs to just be said is that uh, a film is a, a lot of different things yeah right and i think in a, a film going experience can can be a, a lot of different things so on the level of the experience of going into a theater hearing loud sounds mm-hmm. seeing bright lights going wow yeah and, of course honey did you see that yeah yeah okay yeah i i think there were definitely it's a movie. it was a, it's a movie <laughs> yeah, it's a movie, it's right, a movie. Right. yes you're picking up what, what i'm trying to put down here so i think that for the people that enjoyed it They can enjoy it on that level and I can respect that. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't have anything bad to say about paying, you know, whatever we pay, eight to fourteen dollars, going on for a date night, going to go Mm -hmm. see a movie. And the other thing I want to say in defense of those people too, is that anybody that was uh expecting this film to do anything politically significant is either lying to themselves or stupid, or just young and doesn't understand how the world works. No, you you can't make a film about something as a divisive and also like a genuinely a you know national security yeah. sort of uh topic or issue mm-hmm. um and have some sort of incendiary take or some sort of intake a take that could incite any kind of yes uh negative sort of output or reaction to the public i mean they do care about what movies get released sure. and what movies get shown and it is an election year and we are in the time that we're in. So they're not going to release anybody that was looking for that movie to be, <laughs> oh, they really said something in this. You got to go see. Like, 
that's not what they do. They're not. <laughs> these surprising. are surprising. These are yeah. No, of course not. No, so you're I, saying strictly coming from a twenty four. Or yeah. just in general? No, I think in general. Yeah. I don't think they, there can ever be... Sure, you can put a movie out on YouTube or do a yeah. subversive documentary any time of the... Any day of the week. I'm saying a major wide release that you see mm -hmm. on TikTok right. that gets that level of advertising mm -hmm. budget that you see on the sides of buses. Yeah. You're seeing the word civil war everywhere. The pre-screening for that, they definitely made sure that there was no type of nonsense in there that could get anybody riled up and before people say oh well there's definitely scenes in there that are still controversial what really was um, but was there though like the thing is is they did such a great job and this could you could interpret this as a good thing about a movie like that i just think when you defang something i personally kind of take that as it's a bad thing but yeah but in terms of like watchability or you know just the fact that it's a safer thing to do mm -hmm. maybe this is a good thing but i would say that what it does so well is it's showing you aspects of things that should be like you know very concerning to you yes. about the the level of realism that it's kind of depicting in a right. especially a time that is so uh divisive and mm -hmm. and scary and all those words you know you would think that Th there would be so many tripwires, like so many Im imageries, let's say, mm -hmm. that could that it could accidentally stumble into, and it like completely sidesteps all of that, and it's so well done. It shows you things that are still, you know, shocking, like mass graves of and course. mass, you know, uh, executions. But it any symbolism that could possibly be misconstrued or any type of, uh, let's say, imagery that that could give it that ha that could have a meaning in itself yes right they are able to neutralize that by, by basically making a story that is devoid of of any substance right so the basic premise is that it's these photojournalists that are in the united states and they get a special invitation to interview the president who is bunkered at the white house and the uh, Western forces and the, the other, you know, fake group are closing in on the capital yeah. and it's becoming a war zone. And there are these other bands of, of militia groups mm -hmm. um, that are joining in on, you know, fighting the U.S. military yeah. back into D.C., basically backing them up into a corner. And it's revealed throughout the movie. And I think th this is another good thing the movie does is that it uh, definitely reveals that the bad guys being are actually the you know the the government yes. and that the uh rebels and the other forces they may not necessarily be good and and they may have their own they have their reason for doing what they're doing right that there is this tyrannical like dictatorship basically mm -hmm. that's getting uh fought beaten back down okay. basically that that's kind of the backdrop that you pick up yeah from kind of following what's going on and the bits and pieces that you get but you know, it completely fantasizes, like makes a fantasy of like photojournalists, like right. war, combat journalists. They're like literally right inside of a firefight, mm -hmm. where, like where like it just it, it's so it's way over the top. Something with that, that definitely wouldn't be going on. No now, way. And, and not to cut yeah, you off. Yeah. Is it is it does it take place at like in the actual civil war or is it like? If a modern day civil war were to happen, so it's during a civil war. So, okay. so because the country's so massive, like you're yeah. hearing reports of things going on, and the war itself is sort of coming to a head, and you can tell by the story that it's been going on, and that there's sort of sections of the country yes. that kind of no longer maybe communicate as yeah, well to yeah. each other. So, because of that, the story kind of stays away from really painting a, a real lore behind okay. it. And it only gives you the bits and pieces that you learn from what the journalists know is going on like at that moment. Right? I like that though. Yeah, which is cool. And it gives it gave me kind of almost like 28 days later or oh. that uh, not not necessarily in the isolationism, yeah. but just in the sort of road movie yeah. type of way, as well as the lack of information right. type of way. So, you know, like I said, there there's things you can enjoy about the movie. Um, I think pretty much everybody who was like acting in it was great. Mm -hmm. there, there really wasn't anything bad to say about anybody acting in it. But I think because it was devoid of meaning, it's an entirely 
a thoughtless movie in terms of its high concepts. Right. It's good in terms of its functionality as like an action movie, like I said. Yeah. As in terms of lights and sounds and it's camera and there. action, it's we you did it, Got guys. It. But in terms of it having any type of significance, uh, it, it there was none, and I think that was intentional. And I think it's because that's the only way you can do a movie like that. Yeah. So then comes my final reason why this mm -hmm. is mid, is because if you realize that, then you realize that if they were never going to make a political statement with this, and they knew that it was going to probably come out around an election year, then it was a money grab. Yeah, that, it, because when you very first said that, I was, you know, you have a name like Civil War. We have yeah. all over the media people claiming we're going to be in another Civil War soon here, which I don't believe is going to happen. But what better time to drop something like that? It's around election time. I was thinking when I first heard about it, I'm like, oh, another war movie. Not in a fucked up yeah. way, but I was just but like, you thought it'd be fuck, cool. You know, yeah, like, how many have come out? You know, right, like, right. Maybe this one to be and a twenty four was housing it. So right. it was like it was their most I'm expensive film. I thought oh. they were. I thought, but I see how they used the money, and while I well. wouldn't have, yeah, they okay. So there's this thing in the movie, and this has already been covered, but the coolest thing that I've always wanted to see with these types of films they did, which is that the gun sounds, the sound design of a gun going off mm -hmm. is one of the scariest parts about the movie. Like despite, I mean, you see helicopters and tanks, but what's actually one of the most scariest thing is when someone's holding a gun in that movie, there's this real tenseness because the times that you do hear a gun go off, it's this incredible cracking sound that just is the scariest, most terrifying sound. And, and there's so many other movies that, Guns will be going off, and the sound design just makes it sound like they're just these little pop rockets, yes. you know? But if a fucking AR-15 goes off in a closed room, that yeah. shit blows well, the, you know? Isn't it funny how uh, <laughs> a movie gets the good side of that argument of making the gun sounds be good? And then yeah. when we were talking about it in games... Wait, 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 Remember, wait. Like the same comparison you just made about the gun sounds being so good and yeah. showing their attention to detail. But then remember we were talking about how a lot of the modern games do that well, but it doesn't work well for the game. It's yeah. kind of ironic. Yeah, that is. It works so well for a fucking movie, but in the game, it's like nobody could give a rat's ass at right. this point. That's right. funny. <laughs> I like that. That's funny. But no, nah, I'm so, so yay or nay, I'm going to see it. I would say uh, if somebody's already going and they call you okay. and it's so seven, no. it's seven o'clock on a friday <laughs> and they're like hey we're six beers deep let's go you know <laughs> something to do then yes yeah but don't go by yourself and see it now no, no, no. no. okay it's funny because i have a, a couple of a couple of my buddies are some a24 fanboys and yeah. uh one of them a few days ago we were in our group chat he was just giving his take on the movie he said he said the opposite of what you said Oh yeah, well, what do you say? What would be the opposite of mid? I mean, if mid is in the middle, there really is no opposite. He said it was really good. He liked it. Mm -hmm. That could just be the super fan in him though. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and I think too, it's one of those things where if what's your barrier or what's your uh comparison list? Like what other movies has right. that person seen? If A24 is their favorite studio ever and those one are, of. Okay, one okay. Yeah. So I want I want to it, it's it's Joey. You've met Joey. Joey, my my boy Joey. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah. I wanna, if he has some free time, I want him to be on here too because he's what he watched a lot of movies. He's yeah. a super movie guy. We got to like, get a movie person yeah, on here. Yeah, we do, we do because I don't think we've really had one. And I would like to see whatever kind of conversations you guys can come up with. I would definitely your like opinions and takes on certain movies. Yeah, let's do that. But and and, and no, you know. Uh, no smoke to him. I'm just saying that. No, like, I know, I know. Yeah, yeah, no. I, 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 but I'm just saying that when, because it was good at certain yeah. things that, like I said, I hadn't seen. There's yeah. certain like the the uh, gun thing. There are certain movies that do it, but not really on that scale right. and not with that uh, intention. Yeah. Like there was a very obvious intention of what they mm -hmm. were doing with that. And when you see things like that, you've got to give it credit for you know? sure. But at the same time. That's I, not enough to save that's it. That's not enough to save it, man. No. 100%. No. For, for what it could have been, for how subversive, how sick that could have been. But they're not going to do sick shit because people aren't actual People lit. aren't into sick shit, bro. They're, not, they're just not lit like they used to be, man. I really feel like it, bro. Like I'm, and, and I'll go and I'll see. So have you seen that movie? Uh, uh, what was it called? Infinity Pool? No. Um, with Mia Goth and uh, whatever. But 
that there there was supposed to be this idea i feel like with art films okay. that when you see it it's supposed to kind of test your limits of like what a film is mm -hmm. you know what you're comfortable seeing right you know and when you get into uh subject matter and things that are risque or controversial mm -hmm. You know, you're expecting there to be some level of risk taking. Okay. Let's say, like, let's let's say that if I'm supposed to go to a really good restaurant that has really good pizza, mm -hmm. right? That's like what a good normal movie is. Yeah. And then an art movie is like, let's go to a place that has really good pizza, but it also might be might have like a pepper in it that could yeah. like you know m make your make you go to the hospital right but it ends up working but it ends up right yeah. exactly so that's kind of supposed to be the formula yeah. and i feel like uh movies that are supposed to fit into that formula nowadays are just toothless yeah toothless because they probably focus too much on either implementing the risk throughout the whole movie which kind of can it kind of takes away from it, you know. If throughout the whole movie it's like, oh, risk, 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 you're like, ah, okay, we yeah. did it, now. or yeah, or like whatever the trade-off is of the risk and the reward, mm -hmm. it's like it wouldn't make sense to go through all that to get to where they're going. You know what I mean? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And I and I'm okay with that with some movies being yeah. that way and just appreciating them for the attempt. Mm -hmm. But when every movie that I've seen in a while, I, I feel that. like hasn't really taken a risk that surprised me yeah. and been truly wow i have never seen some crazy yes. action like i remember uh there was a movie called high tension have you seen that film it's a horror movie it used to be on netflix it mm -hmm. used to be on everything it should be pretty still pretty easy to find but it's in french but they have it dubbed or subbed okay. there's like so many different versions and it's a pretty well-known movie it's about this woman that's stalked by this crazy uh you know seeming serial killer guy through the french countryside okay and uh she's you know they, this guy's like killing people in these horrific insane ways mm -hmm. throughout the entire film you learn spoiler for anybody who we don't care who cares yeah. guys uh he turns out that she was imagining that it was uh, a person stalking her and that it was actually her killing all those people because she was obsessed with this one woman that was also Damn. Like, uh, that sounds wild. Yeah. So, uh, the movie's really grisly and crazy. And I was showing it to my friend Matt, who shouts out to Matt, who, uh, wasn't like a big movie fan himself, but would always watch films with me, like when, you know, when I was younger. And, uh, we were watching the movie. There's a scene where they put a guy's head through the banister, uh, like, uh, bars, like on a staircase. Yeah. You know how, like, there's the side mm -hmm. railing put it this head through the bars and then got a bookshelf on the on the ground floor level and just slid the bookshelf across the uh, the railing and just took his head right off my friend matt jumped up and like staring at the at the tv goes what and i remember that moment and i'm being like that's what a good movie should make you do because you just you describing that scene to me if i like Everything up until the bookshelf coming along, I'd be like, all right, I have an idea of what's about to happen. <laughs> as soon as I see them do that, I would be like, dude, this makes no sense. <laughs> but no, that, that's, that's the perfect example of what we were talking about. That is a huge risk to take because that easily, from my understanding, that easily could have made the movie unwatchable for a lot of people. Yeah. Not, not because they're grotesqueness, not because it's like super gory in, in that sense. Just it would have had a lot of people questioning, like, what the fuck was that scene for? But the way you're describing it, I understand what it's for now. Yeah. Make you yeah. jump about your seat. Like, what the fuck did I just watch? And you'll never forget. Like, it, yeah, you'll still, never forget that. I still see Matt to this day. That was had to have been over 10 years ago. And I could bring up, just say the word high tension. He knows exactly what scene I'm about to bring up. It's burned into his soul for the rest of his life. Yeah. And, and that's kind of what a good movie. So if a movie doesn't do that, or if I don't see movies being made like that for a long time, it, it makes me sad. That's all I'm yeah, saying. Yeah, I mean, the, it's the inspiration just either yeah. isn't there, or like you said, they're just in it for the money grab. They're just in it for the money grab, bro. Yeah, everything's like, that right now. Everything's a money grab, bro. Everything. So I'm that's sad. just you know that's where I'm at with it. Let's well what, talk about up? a money grab. Yeah. So I know they're not your favorite artist, but have you been keeping up with any of the uh, Drake versus 
the industry. Oh God! I know Do you're we an have academics to talk fan. about this. I know uh, you're an academics fan. You know, I, I think this is a good time to talk about this, Dom. I don't listen to rap music anymore. I, I've actually decided that that's uh, a lie. That rap music is bad for um for all of us, really, but particularly bad for, for human consumption. For yeah, but particularly for African human beings that live in the on the North American continent, the <laughs> sound frequency of rap is very, very bad, bad, bad. People should not be involved with that if you are of the african genus and you happen to live on the north american uh glacial plate that we are on so that was your answer to what i asked yes that it was Dude, that is terrible <laughs> that is terrible so you're just not a fan of uh like beefs and rap if that's what we can call it no of course i am well but i haven't been following this just because it just seems so thirsty and it seems so wwe and that's why I, that's so why i just I stayed away from the grab comment okay to this. okay the way it's playing out is a lot of people are just are thinking that that like it's just it's like a publicity stunt and yeah. it sounds like it is i mean look who's involved bro yeah but uh i did want to say they're painting this narrative right now that like drake is like now this like sol- uh, solidifies drake because all these people the way they're mm-hmm. painting it are coming after him right like mm-hmm. it started with the kendrick song and then now they're saying Rick Ross went after him, which he did. They're saying, A$AP can you give Black, me? Did. Can you give me uh, breakdowns of each what you think each diss track was and w- who won in each battle? Just break it down um, for me. Okay, so there's two different parts. I might we're not going to include J Cole in this combo because he's already he's he's out of it for what that that little bullshit stunt he pulled. But <laughs> it would be Drake versus Kendrick and then Drake versus Rick Ross. Now. I'm a rap fan. I'm not this this um, internet uh, persona <laughs> fan that like a lot of these fans are. You know uh-huh. what I mean? Like yeah, these yeah, people, yeah. Drake can go get in a rap beef like when he did with Pusha T, and I get absolutely bodied. And then yeah. niggas are gonna say, "Nah, yeah, yeah. Drake's too much of this to ever lose." It like yeah, shut the fuck up and Pusha listen to the music. You know? it, yeah. But um, it's it's hard to say because you know Kendrick. I don't feel like Kendrick's thing was really a diss. And this one, I'll be like the second or third time Drake's. You know, taking the sissy fighter out and taking things to heart that he shouldn't. <laughs> yeah. Just like he did with the control verse. So it was yeah. like, bro, it's, it's from the competition. Like, get over it. But right. The Like That verse came out. I like the song as a whole. And for what it is, if we're going to consider that a diss track, Kendrick did that the right way. Um, Drake's response, though, honestly surprised me. As far as the diss goes, hmm. I, I actually kind of liked it. I'm not saying it was necessarily better, but Drake's was more shots at everybody that was mentioned. Mm-hmm. Kendrick's was strictly at you know the big three, so that'd be Drake and J Cole. If yeah, that that's what that would be from. So as a song, Kendrick's is better. If we're talking about straight disses, Drake's I would probably say is at least at the same level. Okay, because he addresses shit. Yeah. Now, Rick Ross. Yeah. I forgot what their beef was. Some shit, but Rick Ross's response was actually good. I okay. like one, one thing I like okay. that I seen that really that really like like resonated with me when I read it at the time after listening to the diss track was somebody in this comment section saying that Rick Ross really knows how to pick a motherfucking beat for when he raps on it. Right. And obviously throughout his career, yeah, I could have said that numerous times. But right. in this specific moment, that spoke louder than anything else about Rick Ross because the, the beat, it's not like some crazy ass beat either, but mm. his flow he hits on it and what he's talking about, like the whole thing is just, it, it's perfect. And I hate it because people are basically saying like, Rick Ross is irrelevant. They're not even going to listen to his diss track. They're making it about like money and popularity. I'm like, no, man, listen to the song. Right, yeah. Fuck all that other shit. Don't, don't nobody want to hear about all that other shit. I want to see motherfuckers rap, but outside of that, I, I don't even care to entertain the rest of the people involved. Like The weekend, <laughs> ASAP Wait, Rocky is- dropped a fucking verse on the Future album that, you know, sorry, ASAP Rocky, you know, I liked a lot of your early work. Trash. Garbage. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Garbage. Wait, b- break it down for me. What? Why are you saying this? I, I love that you're saying this. Please no. tell me why. I mean, for him not to drop any music in as long as he did and, and come from at least those first two albums that he put out. Like, I didn't I didn't consider him the super lyrical guy or the super, like, like, high talented guy, but he was good for when he came out, right? If you hear this song, if you hear his flow, hear the lyrics, straight cornball shit. It is ass, bro. Like, like super bad. 
Could it be that ASAP Rocky's actually been a cornball for a little while now? And you just are now noticing. No, I no, I thought that I'm just now noticing. I told I told you since testing. I don't know who that is. That must be the clone. <laughs> I don't know who that is. That must be the clone. Because as soon as testing came out, I was just like, dude, I'll give this a chance. I'll, I'll try this to it a couple times, and it never worked for me. Yeah, I mean, like I said, bro, his first mixtape, his first two albums, I liked. Pretty much everything else after that was like. Dude, just unlistenable. I I think that some people have their runs and they have them well. Like ASAP, like I said, he came out at the right time. ASAP came out at the right time and he had a legendary run. Good he for did. him. Good for him. But Stay out of the studio. Hold up till Stay today. out of the studio. Don't rap ever. Yeah, again. just Stay stop, back. bro. Just t- <laughs> don't ruin your career, bro. Just just you know, drop those couple albums and then be done. Yeah. Why would you ruin your like? Legacy, and and that's the other thing too. Is I try to avoid anytime I see an ASAP release now because I don't want him to continue to embarrass himself to the point where I start to say he's corny because I don't yeah. want to remember him that way. No, I want to remember ASAP. I in the actual way that like I enjoyed his mixtapes. Yes, like, fucking the ASAP Mob original mixtape is some of the best shit that came out when we were young. Yeah. Like no, you know, no cap. And and here's the the difference too was like. Although ASAP Rocky really like gravitates towards like a different a different regional sound, yeah, from wh- like as opposed to from where he's from, uh huh. You still knew early on like it was still New York shit, yeah. You know what course. I mean? Like like it screamed New York throughout the tracks, like yeah. the beats, he the was ad libs, the way he was like all yeah. that, like it screamed New York. And I feel like I will give him credit for the, at least those first three entries because things change from album to album, and I like that. But I feel like now. He's done away with that kind of shit, and he doesn't know what to do. Like a lot of it's like it's like old ass recycled flows, not even necessarily from himself, maybe from somebody else. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it sounds like on the song in specific, on the "We Still Don't Trust You" album, like it sounds like he's trying so hard to like effortlessly come off as this like diss track rapper or, or like this cool guy. Yeah, and it really he's... doesn't work at all for him. No, and he hasn't earned that in a long time. No. He can't just walk in like that. And it, wouldn't it have been so great if we could say the opposite right now? Wouldn't that have been so great yeah. for ASAP's career? If he made an actual effort on that song, we would all be saying, and I'd be saying it, yeah. yo, that ASAP verse was fire, bro. Like, that reminds us, yo, yeah. you remember all that great shit he did? Now we're sitting here trying to fucking not <laughs> not listen. Yeah, like it's fucking and what what a tragic perfect rollout that would have been into all these rumors we're hearing of getting a new album from him this year. Like the way he's been like just showing and performing with things, it's not looking good. Keep that. It's, yeah. Keep yeah. that one. Or how about scrap that one? How about that? Start over. Fresh yes. piece of paper. <laughs> Let's go. That you you might put out one of your best albums if you do that. Yeah, we would hope. Whatever for. role he's on, he's got to slow it down. I agree, bro. But uh, what else is what else has been coming out that have been music wise? Yeah, music wise. I feel like we were on tr- track somewhere and then we got lost in the ASAP Rocky sub conversation. Oh yeah, the um, B. Oh yeah, yeah. So so uh, overall, like, w- what do you think is going to be the outcome of this? I mean, where does this place Drake in the rankings? Where does this keep, you know, future? Who won? Who lost? What are the results? Now, see, th- this was a perfect thing for Drake for this to happen the way it did. Okay. All those future verses on the, the future album. Yeah. And the, like, even from the first album to start it off and everything else. This is a very good position for Drake to be in because he's addressed all of it. And for one, everybody would always test Drake like one not not rappers like people online mm-hmm. like oh he's not bad already mm-hmm. he's not ready for no beef right. none of that yeah and he's shown a few times if the beef was worth it to him like with Meek Mill mm-hmm. and Common back in the day or whatever he will you know he will step up and he'll put some shit out and it won't be bad it'll mm-hmm. be pretty good mm-hmm. this is a perfect opportunity for him because there's like five or six people at least that are like clearly going at him or very subliminally coming at him. Yeah. So if he get, comes out right now, addresses it all in a slick way, puts it over, you know, a good beat, it sounds good, comes out as a good song, mm-hmm. it's only going to add more to him. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, right, right. The only deciding factor I feel like that could do anything in amongst this beef is everybody's still waiting on Kendrick's reply now. Because Drake's diss that he dropped was mainly aimed at Kendrick. But he just threw some shit in there for the other guys as well. Right. Just because he was like, fuck it, I'm going to just do it all in one. Let me not go release six different tracks. Let me just put it all on one, put it on wax and see what happens. Now, 
it's been like half a week, a little over half a week since the song came out, I think. Maybe a week now. I don't know, bro. It's looking a little scary on the opposing side. I mean, Kendrick being who he is, I'm I'm expecting maybe a day or two it's going to take for a drop. You think so? I would ima- I was imagining at the time, but like I said, we're almost a week into this now. Mm-hmm. So I want to see. I mean, people online, bro, I- I've stayed away from being online be- in the midst of all this because it just makes me sick to my stomach <laughs> some of the things that these fucking people get on there and say. What are they saying? Oh, uh, Drake came back and, and, and gave a response in this amount of days. Everybody's still waiting on Kendrick. Doesn't look like he's the boogeyman to me. It took Drake like two weeks from the like that verse to put this on and then there's people on the kendrick side like oh he's not even going to consider that as enough effort for him to respond to a track like i'm like bro do you like y'all almost live with this nigga to be talking the way you're talking (laughs) like 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 you know him you know him this that is your roommate the way some of these people are talking about like and i don't understand why people feed into that so much I don't get like I don't know. I like that like for me, like obviously I could talk to you about this because mm-hmm. you know, we talk music. But I don't go around just talking to random people about this. Like for the most part, as soon as the shit drops, if I'm interested enough, I go listen, I dissect it for myself. I try to take from it what I can. Like, oh damn, he meant this when he said this, or damn, he's relating this bar all the way back to you know, right. twenty four the whatever the fuck these guys do in clever ways. I, that's what I like to do with it all. And I just I like to hear people who are considered you know the higher tiers of their generations you don't get to see something like this happen often obviously back in the 90s early 2000s this was a way more normal thing that would happen mm-hmm. these rap beats and come but they were way better back then yeah right because right. it was straight direct yeah. no subliminals saying names on the track they went and got in the studio like if i hear i, I read something that said when jay-z's takeover came out it took nas like three months to come out with ether damn and it's 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 very weird for me to see that because I would consider these guys in terms of straight rapping ability, you know, they're up there. Mm-hmm. But now you fast forward to like some of these other beefs and like, bro, you can say my name on a track today. A lot of dudes that same night or the next day, they're dropping. Yeah, but I mean, do you think Look that, at the difference though? Yeah, but also yeah, look at the difference and also you really think Drake sitting there and being like, Hold on, uh, a uh, jacuzzi full of models. Wait a second. Let me get right, my pen right. and pad. No. And right now he's like, "Hey, get the twenty assistants that I have and get them to write something, and then um, put a beat together or give me a list yeah. of beats to listen to." Mm-hmm. And let and then the, it probably took them twenty five minutes to yeah. actually make of it. Of course, he probably did it in two takes. I mean, think about it. Like the his the guy's actual job aside from performing, which is hard. Yeah. Like putting on a live performance is very hard. But the actual job of like recording a song, he's probably he mastered probably it. Any, uh, yeah. yeah, no, he's probably mastered like recording it in the right tones and, and getting the right for tracks because sure. he's been doing it for twenty two years. Yeah. So, the, doing one little track doesn't take that long. No, and he's not writing it himself. No, hundred percent, no, for sure. And, th- and that's again, that's that's the difference too. Nowadays, a lot of these rappers say, you know, they can all go ahead and claim they don't write nothing down or whatever. That that is impressive in its own right. But at the same time, a lot of these rappers always say, you know, uh, I I've been looking at the top ten rappers out and I have diss tracks ready for all of them in case it happens. Like to me, cool, I like that, and I understand writing something like that in advance could help you. But I'm I I was always more of a fan of like, let's say we're beefing, but it's nothing crazy. Then you put out a song, and then it's like, oh. Now I'm about to go start penning my shit. Right. I have more respect for that. Because mm-hmm. if I write a if I write a diss track five years in advance, right, and then I only have to tweak a couple things within the actual lyrics right now, and then add a couple modern day uh, general media bars to like connect mm-hmm. with the fans and like have these little witty punchlines. Right. It's like, what do you like? Are you scared you can't do that on the fly, or you know what I mean? You can't do that within your own amount of time. I don't know. But this shit. I'm I'm severely underimpressed with how this is all panned out. Yeah, I mean, I don't. Anytime there's like a star-studded anything, like an ensemble cast of characters for something that's supposed to be salacious, yeah, or at least entertaining, it never is. Ever. And anytime it's so you do that, annoying because it's no. like everything about it screams that this should be like the top. Like we should get like I was expecting like top rapping performances from. 
all these guys. Because Why would they, they do that though? What, what? Who? Who is? Where is the check in that? These are all guys that are very well paid. Forget the check. That, they, exactly. That's, that's, that's my point. That's my point. It shouldn't even be about the money for these guys. It should be about. Okay, you know me and you wouldn't agree to this necessarily, but we know the media's take on Drake. You ask majority of people around our age and then from a younger generation and so on, majority of them, if you ask them who's the best rapper, a lot of them are going to say Drake. Yeah, yeah. Or even best artist. A lot of them will say Drake. They definitely say Drake, yeah. So to say that we know that so well, there's no way that all these other guys involved aren't on that same level. Not thinking that themselves because they know better. Yeah. They know how the media is and how fans are. Right. So for me... If you're, if you're going to take shots at somebody who has such a large background of, of people and fans behind them, you ain't trying to end somebody's career? You ain't trying to come full force with that? Yeah. I, think I about just, who's viewing it all. Yeah. I just feel like I, I just feel like none of these guys are, aver- are actually mad at each other. No. I don't think any of them take any of this shit seriously. They're all actors, not just Drake. Yes. They're yes. all actors. And I think uh, this is just another way to keep the buzz going. Who doesn't like, you know, being trending on Twitter, Yeah, having people like DJ Academics talking about every move you're making and making you feel mythologized? I mean, that's a lot of what these guys' credibility rests on and therefore their effectiveness as a record, you know, a recording artist lies on the lore of them and their sort of, you know, place in the rap pantheon. Yeah. So, of course, they're going to exploit this. Yeah, I mean, of course, but it sucks, but it's also what people want. You know, fans, I think they want to have these stories. They want to be able to talk about these people as if they know who they are or they know what they would do or that what would offend them and what wouldn't or what's even true yeah. about them. These are all guys. They all went to acting school in, yeah. in, up in La Cienega. Like Forming art school. You know, shit, like they're yeah. not even, these aren't even guys. These aren't even people. They're, they're, uh, they're androids? No, they're not even androids. They're literally like holograms. These yeah. are, I mean, uh, th- there's not even a, a physical on, thing. Bro. Like if you were to go, not even a hologram, that's the wrong word. You know when you see uh, the behind the scenes of Star Wars and there's a guy in one of those funny looking suits where they have the little like uh, <laughs> uh, po- uh, balls or whatever all over their bodies on a suit? That's them? That's them. If you were to actually go onto a set for, for a music video mm-hmm. for Drake, it would just be like a bunch of white dudes yeah. dancing in those Drake's suits. Drake's not even a person. Drake's, these are, these are different. It's a different dude, by the way, every time. They just have to be the same <laughs> heights. And That's they just, it, yeah. it, these are CGI guys. None of these people are real. Would never surprise me, bro. I mean, like like I said, to bring it all back, it, I feel like this whole situation is just some some form of a crash grab. Or cash yeah. grab. Everything is. Like, we've already, you know. Yeah, shit uh, is just, it's sad. Yeah. But. There's no authenticity or anything. This isn't a cash grab. And one of the ways <laughs> you can support this show is by checking us out on our youtube page we would love for you guys to subscribe yes uh, if you haven't already if you're listening to this and you got to the end of it thank you very much yeah, um, thank you guys seriously guys we do this for every listener that you know happens to make it to this point we've done this for you and we yeah, appreciate you absolutely uh check us out on instagram that's two detroit nerds follow us there Facebook to Detroit Nerds. Of course, the Facebook as well. TikTok to Detroit Nerds. Yeah, and if you're local to the Detroit area, send us a message. Yeah. Let us know what you think about the show. Let us know if you'd like to be on the show. And uh, also, if you do like video games and you'd like to maybe bet some money on them and yeah. you know play some video games and some We're tournaments, yeah. there's some things you could do with us. So please uh, please reach out. Yes. You Anyways. Can get involved in a lot. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys.